Welcome back my friends. In today's video we're going to take a look at how adding fluconazole to the tank to deal with bryopsis has affected the grip calerpa as well as another type of calerpa, I believe it's feather calerpa, in my tank. If you appreciate videos about Acropora or LPS or zoanthids, I highly encourage you to hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell, because I do have a lot of plans for upcoming videos and hopefully I am going to figure this out and get some really epic shots of the coral. Now onto the main topic with the fluconosol. So the first thing I'm going to show you guys is what my macroalgae section looked like before dosing fluconosol and what it looks like today. So this is a video that's pulled from one of my previous updates and we can see here that the macroalgae section is very full and I'm used to it being very full with the grape calerpa taking center stage and it's a really nice vibrant green color. Here's what it looks like today. So the white balance is a bit screwed up on this, I'm sorry. But you can see here, it's really sparse. Um, I, I did harvest a little bit of it maybe a couple weeks ago, not really thinking. But obviously, I think a lot of the grape calerpa and the, especially the feather calerpa is kind of melted. It's not doing well, it looks really pale. Now I've done some water changes since then. So this stuff over here, that is looking much greener. The, the main reason I added the fluconazole was because if you look over here on this power head, I believe that is bryopsis and this is not a really good view. So you're gonna have to take my word for it. It feels really rough. The funny thing is I don't see it anywhere else in either of the display tanks. And the only um, place in my tank that I've really noticed it is down here in this, what used to be the frag section. Now I just have the protein skimmer and I still do have some random frags along with the AP700. Now we're going to take a look at whether the death of some of my macroalgae or the fact that it's not doing so well, if it has had an impact on the tank. And so far, everything still looks pretty great, I believe. I did have RTN, so I'm going to show you guys, or, or STN. This fox flame, the corner, I noticed it was bleached maybe three or four mornings ago. And I was pretty sure that was the start of STN, but that was the morning, so I just observed it throughout the day, and in the evening it was still fine. However, when I was looking at the other coral in the evening, what I found was this fireflies. So my fireflies colony actually consists of three separate frags that I just put together. And one of them started to unfortunately RTN. And the difference between RTN and STN is that in my experience, RTN is really fast. That means it wouldn't just be a tiny little piece that comes off. Oftentimes, like you can see the skin just peeling off the, the acro and it's so fast, like within maybe one or two hours, there was a lot, a big chunk of it was bare. If you ever run into a situation specifically with RTN, I believe, in my experience, your best bet is just to frag a lot of the branches off if you can. And if it's just like a, if it's just one branch frag, try to get as much of the tip as you can, but you also wanna make sure that you leave some space between um, where you're cutting and where the RTN is. The reason for that is if you cut it right where the RTN is, that flesh is probably already, if it's bacterial, it's already infected and if it's stressed out and it's going to peel off, it's already in the plans. It's already in the works. 
So what you want to do, you want to try to cut as far away from that as possible. And hopefully what will happen is the tip that you're cutting has not been yet been affected and then it can recover and regrow. Whereas my experience with STN is very different. Typically with SPN, there is a specific issue. So if I run into STN issues, and you can tell it's STN because you'll notice maybe a bare patch, but it doesn't progress, or if it progresses, it's much slower. If I encounter STN, I will do a water change. Typically that will help. If there's any parameter issues, the water change, even a small one, is gonna help kind of bring things back to normal. But as you can see here, other than those two, things look fine. Um, I, my nitrates are, I think, between five and 10 now, which makes sense. Macroalgae is not working very hard. My phosphates are still showing relatively low. Last time I checked, it was about 0.03, which is where I like it to be. And because it's 0.03, I'm not dosing phosphates anymore. I'm just gonna test more regularly and then adjust as needed. So the reason I'm sharing this entire video with you is because before I put the fluconazole in and I didn't dose very much, I dose at um, probably close to the minimum recommended amount, which is 20 milligrams per gallon. So I estimate the entire volume of the system to be about 200 gallons, which would be 4,000 milligrams or four grams. So it's not very much. Um, what I think is Briopsis is actually still there, which is unfortunate. And my grape calerpa, well, it really suffered, as well as the feather calerpa. So the reason I'm sharing this with you is just be aware that fluconazole can affect grape calerpa. If I had to go back in time and redo this, I would actually remove my macroalgae, put it into a separate bucket, put the light over it and hope that it survives while doing the treatment. Having it in the tank, I believe it's probably used up some of the fluconazole. So maybe the strength is not strong enough now to take care of potentially the Briopsis. I hope it's Briopsis because if it's anything else, I really hope it doesn't spread in my tank. If any of you are wondering, I did do the research because that was one of my main concerns. Like, hey, is this gonna mess up? what I have for macroalgae. Unfortunately, a lot of times when people talk about macroalgae, what they're talking about is ketomorpha. And um, I didn't show you guys, but I do have a bit of keto in my sump. It looks absolutely fine. On the forums when I was doing the research, people with ketomorpha weren't being affected. Unfortunately, grape calerpa is a different beast. So it was obviously affected, but I think thanks to the water changes, there's been en enough dilution now where it may be coming back. So until next week, my friends, thank you for watching. Please stay safe and take care of yourself. And we'll see you next week.